Now, what about this book, Dover Court, Tuong's Hidden Treasure and Its People with Harold the ah, 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 Peacock? It's a great book. G'day, Harold the Hark Ark. Uh, g'day, Danny. And yeah, there's so many stories in that book, but about Ipswich as well. It's unbelievable. Now, we're going to talk about Al Capone. Those that don't know who Al Capone is, he was actually a gangster who shot a lot of people and was all over prohibition of alcohol, etc., and tax evasion back in America, back in the 1920s and 30s. But you are going to talk about also turtle racing, because we've had a, uh, an echidna on today with Dr. Janine Young talking about an echidna's got, um, it's got four, uh, four penises. Oh, well, l- lucky echidna, I guess. But <laughs> turtle racing. That, that, there's a weird. There's even a weirder history of turtle racing in Switzerland. Right. Tell you that. Well, let's go on, go on with the turtle. Okay. One penis. <laughs> okay. Yeah, turtle racing was well. It was huge in the 1930s, like you said, during the depression. That's because it was the cheapest form of racing and betting there was. After wow. all, turtles don't eat much, and they need only a small track. Right. And that, <laughs> and that's where Al Capone comes in because he'd just taken over Chicago after the St. Valentine's Day Massacre in 1929. Now, he already controlled dog racing, but he had all these illegal speakeasies that needed discreet indoor betting entertainment. Right. And turtle racing was perfect because it could easily run inside his venues, would generate the betting revenues that he wanted, and because the races could be a bit slow, that left plenty of time for him to sell his illicit drinks. Wow. So, in 1930, Capone bought 5,000 racing turtles to run on his indoor tracks. Wow. And, and with that popularisation, then turtle racing then came to Australia. Mm. Now, the first recorded turtle race in Ipswich was in 1934. Right. Admission was one shilling, and the owner of the winning turtle was Noel Campbell. Now, Noel's father was William Donald Campbell, who was a bit different. Right. Uh, when, when Campbell Sr. enlisted for the First World War, he used a false name. He then got married eight weeks later using his real name. Then four weeks later, and just before he got on the ship, he must have realised there was no point having a false name. So he admitted the fraud and was sent to the war anyway. So <laughs> in France, Campbell was constantly in trouble for insolence and spent two months in a VD hospital. In the last year of the war, he was wounded and suffered a shell shock, so he was sent home. And while he was recovering in hospital at Kangaroo Point in Brisbane, hmm. he went absent without leave, and his son, Noel, the turtle racing champion, was born exactly nine months later. <laughs> now, a year after the turtle race, Campbell Sr. was accidentally burnt, possibly by exploding sewerage while working with sewerage contractors. Right. But... The really weird part about the history of turtle racing here right. is that the racing committee president and fan of the sport was Mrs. J.W. Harper. Now, her husband was the Reverend Harper, who was later the president of the Congregational Church. <laughs> and the name of the racing committee right. was the North Ipswich Congregational Ladies Association. <laughs> they were fans of the sport here. <laughs> now, <laughs> now, the historic <laughs> venue of that first race... Yes was Olympic Hall, which was just near the North Ipswich Congregational Church, which today is the old Saddle World building at uh, 60 Yes, Downstreet. I'd yeah. be a Canadian yeah. side, Velma. Yeah, so that's where turtle racing was founded in Ipswich. Wow. But then the next turtle It's still there, that building. It is. It is. So you've got to go there and just relive old times. Because, but you've got to remember the popularity of the sport is mm. thanks to Al Capone, Mrs. Harper, and the North Ipswich Congregational Ladies Association. Well, mate, I used to be a jockey on a turtle race, but I kept sliding up the shell. Boom, boom. Um, yeah, I hate it when <laughs> mate, that happens. You, your, your stories are legendary, and I really mean that. And the effort you put in, who'd ever think? I've never heard of turtle racing since then. Have you heard of I've heard of mice races? Yep. I've heard of uh, toad well, it's races. Well, time to bring it. Prime, time to bring it back. Western bring it. The radio. The next. At next outside broadcast. The, that turtle races. You can sell each of the turtles. Put the logo on the back and race the bludgers. Imagine Al Capone saying, uh, "Bring in the turtles, eh? Bring in the turtles. Bring in the turtle." But you know the problem with it. The last turtle that comes in might be you have to wait for about three weeks. <laughs> now, well, that's why you. That's why you're selling the drinks in the meantime, right? Uh, he wasn't really that bad, really. Was oh, he? no, he no, wasn't. He used Daniel. to shoot people in <laughs> cars. No, the only machine, only machine gun seven or eight <laughs> people. <laughs> yeah. Okay, he Dover, wasn't a bad guy. <laughs> Dover Court is this book you've got. How do we get that and all these stories? Yeah, yep. Go to my website, historyoutthere.com. You can get the book and you can read all the about 250 short stories, including Al Capone and these racing turtles. That'll be there tomorrow. How good is Harold the H. Ark, 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 Peacock exclusive to this little radio station on West Brimmer Radio 822?